But next, and as we've reported, the COVID pandemic has taken its toll on people's mental health in our region. But next, there's a warning about the effect it's having on our mental health hospitals. For the final report in our Care After Covid series, we were granted exclusive access to Clockview Hospital in Liverpool. They wanted us to see how they've coped with a rising number of people in crisis. So Alicia McNally went to meet the staff and find out what it's been like. Morning. 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 OK. Dr Declan Highland is making his rounds, seeing patients on the admissions ward at Clockview Mental Health Hospital. But at the moment you feel safe, you feel safe on the ward. But patient security has two faces now, making sure they're safe in themselves and that they're safe from coronavirus. And one of the difficulties that we've had since the COVID-19 pandemic is the fact that patients have had to be bubbled on the ward so that they're uh, appropriately separated so that there's no risk of patients with COVID cross-infecting other patients. It means the effects of the pandemic out here are being firmly felt in here. Everywhere you look in this hospital are signs of how they've had to do things differently. This cafe, for instance, was run by patients, and in ordinary days, this space would be full of people, families, visitors, people socialising, now, of course, standing empty. But one thing the pandemic hasn't changed is the demand for help. In fact, it's greater than ever. It's one more thing staff have to consider in working to keep people safe with many more first-time patients reporting episodes of psychosis or other severe distress. So has finding enough beds been a challenge during the pandemic? Yeah, I think it has during the uh, pandemic because what we have found is that an increasing number of patients have really struggled with the isolation of not being able to see family members on a regular basis and not being able to have that face-to-face -face contact with their consultant psychiatrists and with their community psychiatric nurses. It's led to a, more patients uh, going into crisis and ending up needing to come into hospital. And what we know is we tend to get an influx of patients at weekends. So what we have to try and do as we go into the weekend is ensure that we have adequate beds uh, vacant here in, on the admission wards, but making sure that any patients that we are transferring to one of the treatment wards, that they have a safe and appropriate management plan in place. And it's not only inpatient services seeing a surge in demand. This crisis helpline wasn't even meant to be open yet. They've had to bring the launch forward because of the pandemic and are now taking 2,000 calls every month. It is an extremely busy line. This service is so important because if you wanted to access mental health service previously before this line, um, you would have to attend an accident and emergency department. And for people suffering with significant mental health issues or problems, that them environments sometimes are not conducive. We're hearing from people that have never accessed mental health services before. We're hearing about people who can't have access to their loved ones or the family, they're sitting at home, they're isolated. We've, we've had an increase of students calling. For the team, it's been extremely difficult because outside of work, they have their own worries, they'll have their own family that they want to care for. It's been the most um, challenging 12 months of any of our careers, really. Take care, bye. But all across the hospital are signs of how the Mersey Care NHS Trust is trying to rise to that challenge. In normal times, they'd offer patients workshops to help them transition back into the community. Now, classes in cooking, money management and well-being can all be run online and they're reaching over 20,000 people. The work that we do keeps people safe, keeps people well and hopefully keeps people in the community in their homes. In about a two-week period, we went from having never even thought of, particularly thought of video consultations as a way of meeting people's need, to suddenly being almost the norm for how we were going to do things going forward. Our most vulnerable people still need face-to-face -face appointments. And by introducing different ways of working, we were able to reserve capacity to continue to see our most vulnerable people face to face as safely as possible. This hospital is one example of care after coronavirus, of how the NHS has had to find a new way of doing things and find it fast. But that's a challenge that isn't over yet. I think we're, we're probably seeing the tip of the iceberg, uh, to be honest. Uh, and I think now as we move out of the pandemic, we're going to see more and more people uh, experiencing sort of more long-standing mental health difficulties, things like anxiety and depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. And there is going to be a significant demand, uh, I think, particularly on primary care uh, services in, in terms of mental health issues, but also community mental health teams as well, as they start to try and uh, operate the way they were prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
after the pandemic lies an unknown task. And the end of lockdown won't see the end of this team's marathon effort. But they see the light at the end of the tunnel and say they're ready to face it together. Leisha McNally, ITV News. Well, earlier I spoke to Joe Rafferty, the chief executive of Mersey Care, which runs the Clockview Hospital, and he explained some of the issues which are leading to the increase in new patients. We know that isolation, anxiety, fear of the unknown, uh, you know, m trouble with money, relationships, housing, jobs, all of those sorts of things tend to impact on people's mental health anyway, even in the best of times. And you can imagine during the pandemic that actually all of those buttons have been pushed in people's lives. So it is a complex mixture. One of the health professionals we heard from in Leisha's report talks about the end of lockdown and predicts we're going to see more people experiencing long-standing mental health difficulties, things like anxiety, depression, PTSD. Why is that, do you think? Um, I think, um, you know, we've done a lot of work in, in the Trust to sort of try and anticipate what the next couple of years are going to look like. While we're seeing the end of the... Or hopefully looking forward to the end of the physical impact of COVID, we will see a rise in mental health issues. Um, we predict probably up over the next two years of a 31% increase uh, in mental health activity. The reason, I think it's a bit like, um, if you imagine, you know, shaking a, a bottle of fizzy drink, as long as you've got the lid on tight enough, uh, it doesn't all come out. But my sense is, um, as we ease restrictions, um, I think we may see less of sort of community cohesiveness, that we're all in it together sort of thing, which I think has helped an enormous number of people. And as those restrictions release, um, uh, I think people will start to reflect on what has happened, what it's been like to live for uh, a year or more through a pandemic. And I think as they do that, um, I think we'll see the sorts of emotional issues begin to emerge. Yeah, the, the pandemic has affected every single one of us in some way. So how are your own staff managing their mental health on top of an already very challenging job? Yes, uh, great question. We've, we've, since the start of the pandemic, been absolutely focused on making sure our staff are as, uh, as well cared for as they can be. We've done a lot of sort of physical looking after. We've made sure people have had, uh, you know, f plenty of food and drink. We've made sure uh, right from the start that uh, PPE and all of those really important things that keep, keep people's anxiety down during them uh, working on the front line have all been readily available. Um, but we have opened a, a resilience hub where our staff can uh, refer themselves to. They can go along and, and uh, have exactly access to some of the sort of talking therapies and so on uh, that we're very expert and very familiar with in Mersey Care and indeed those services will be available to, to other NHS staff. So again you know the answer is it will be in lots of different ways but the critical thing is we have been very focused on this from very early on in the pandemic. Well we thank them and you for all you're doing. Joe Rafferty thanks for talking to us. Thanks so much.